In 2021, I visited 25 new theme parks. Some were close to home, while others were overseas. Some were big, while others were smaller FECs. In this video, I will be ranking the top 20 new theme parks I visited in 2021. Starting the list at number 20 is Malibu Jacks in Louisville, Kentucky. This indoor family entertainment center occupies the site of a former Walmart. Most of the complex is dominated by modern arcade games, but there are some rides and attractions on the perimeter. You have the Twist and Shout SBF Visa Spinning Coaster, the Hollywood Speedway Go-Karts where you strategically need to deploy turbo boosts, and the Wave Rider Himalaya which was much faster and wilder than expected. Number 19, Little America. This small park in Wisconsin has some unique and older rides. They have the currently only operating chance toboggan, a rare Herschel Mad Mouse, and a Junior Wood Coaster. There are also some classic flats here, and a three mile long train ride that goes way outside the park's boundaries. This park doesn't have much in terms of thrill rides, but it is awesome for younger guests. Number 18, Schwaben Park. Like the prior park, this one is again geared towards families and kids. Force One is a good Zier family coaster with some decent positive Gs. Both Hummel Brummel and Wilde Hilda are rare rides with awesome soundtracks, although the ride experiences are a bit lacking in my opinion. The park does look amazing though, as it has a little theming plus a lot of greenery. Number 17, Santa's Village Azusement Park. Yet another family park, this one has a light Christmas theme to it. I love the look of the front section of the park. Then you have a few quirky rides like the firefighting ride and the Jolly Trolley Dark Ride. Then you have carnival rides and two off the shelf coaster models rounding out the park. But for thrill seekers, the park oddly has two bona fide thrill rides, an extreme elevation, which is an intense Larson arm drop tower, and Blizzard, which is an inverting frisbee. Number 16, Bay Beach Amusement Park. This is one of the best value amusement parks out there. In fact, it may be the best. All rides cost between 25 cents and $1. And that even includes the Zip and Pippin Wood Coaster, which is easily their star attraction. This wood coaster is very well maintained and chock full of airtime. None of the other rides are standouts in my opinion, but the park is a laid back atmosphere because it basically functions as a city park. Number 15, Connie Land. Switzerland's top theme park may be small in size, but it is unique. Cobra is a bizarre packed shuttle coaster with some crazy airtime and hang time. Mammoth Tree is a one of a kind sky ride that somehow offers thrills and even includes a shocking dark ride segment in a giant tree. Then you also have a dark ride and some quirky water rides. What the park lacks in quantity is compensated with weirdness, and the park had more theming than I anticipated on their larger rides and attractions. Number 14, Legoland New York. America's newest Legoland features the familiar colorful architecture and theming. Between the expansive Miniland and the theming on each ride, I loved how this park looked. Just watch out for the lack of shade in that massive hill. All of the rides are geared towards kids and families, but there were three I kept re-riding. Dragon is their biggest roller coaster, and it features a deceptively forceful layout plus a fun dark ride segment at the start. Ninjago is an addictive shooting ride using hand motions. And the park features the unique Lego Factory Adventure trackless dark ride, which is very well done. Number 13, Wilden Freise Park Klotten. This traditional German theme park is a combination amusement park and zoo. You have quite a few animal exhibits, plus a handful of rides. Roughly half the attractions here are self-operated including the thrilling nautic jet jumping boat ride and the comet swing ride, both of which give some airtime. In the back of the park, you have Heisefart, which is one of the world's best wild mouse coasters with its helixes and series of bunny hills, and those will give airtime. You also have a themed shooting dark ride and a very large flume ride in this castle structure. While these rides aren't perfect, they are ambitious for a regional park like this. I just wish this park had more rides, but I did love the laid back atmosphere and setting overlooking the mountains. Number 12, Belwarde. This is yet another park combining animals and rides. The park looks very nice between all the trees and the theming given to most rides. And yet again, this is another place geared more towards families. 
The best rides here, fittingly, are the family coasters. Wakala is a diverse coaster going both forwards and backwards, and this is a solid Gerslauer family coaster. Then Huracan is a hybrid dark ride and roller coaster from Zier. You do have some thrill rides like the Boomerang and Prototype Hus Topple Tower, but they're okay at best. Number 11, Belantis. This German theme park does everything three quarters correctly. Most of the park is well themed. I love all the lands, but a few areas between them felt unfinished and the music choices were baffling. The park has some good headlining attractions though. Fluk des Ferho is a one of a kind water ride in a giant pyramid and it combines elements of a flume, river rapids ride, and water slide to make it memorable. Huracan wasn't as rough as I expected and it has a strong layout for a Gerslauer Eurofighter. And Gotterflug is an insane Gerslauer Skyroller because of its placement atop a hill. The park needs more quantity and filler rides to fill out its lineup though. Number 10, Freizei Park Plon. This is another park with a laid back feel because of its placement in the woods. The atmosphere felt like Knobles crossed with Storyland. This is another park that didn't have too many rides, but they did have six different roller coasters, including El Toro, which is a decent GCI wood coaster, Dynamite, which is a mock Big Dipper coaster with a few solid inversions, and Miniwa, which is a powered coaster that feels more like a dark ride with all the theming. And the lack of rides here is somewhat compensated by a few walkthrough attractions. Number 9, Legendia. This Polish park is headlined by Lek Coaster. This Facoma Looper may be the best coaster in the world for positive Gs. This ride is intense. The rest of the coasters are just okay, but their supporting non-coasters are solid. You have one of the craziest inverting pendulums in Skyflyer, which has just lap bars and ran a super long cycle. You have the Basilisex screen base shooting dark ride that felt similar to the Justice League rides at the Six Flags parks in America. And then there are a few water rides. The park looks good too. I love the central pond, all the greenery, and the park has really been improving their theming in recent years. Number 8, Fantasiana. This Austrian park surprised me. I expected Wild Train to be awesome, and indeed it was. This little pack's creation had stronger airtime than some RMCs. But the park had a lot more theming than I expected. There were multiple dark rides and walkthrough attractions, and most surprisingly, Knight's Ride Tower. This is the best drop tower not at a Disney park. The combination of theming and a thrilling drop really surprised me. This isn't a particularly big park, but you have two headliners and a good overall appearance. Number 7, Sarkin Niemi. This Finnish park has an amazing location. It's in a big city placed right against the water. This park is pretty compact, but it has a strong flat ride collection, some sprawling water rides, and five roller coasters. Tornado is a rare intimate invert and a wonderful ride, but the rest of the coasters are clones, although one of them is one of the best Skyrocket 2 clones in hype because of its lap bar only trains and views. Number 6, Powerland. This relatively new amusement park is Finland's largest and weirdest park. The lineup is anchored by Junker, which is one of the most underrated launch coasters in the world. This Gerslauer had a powerful launch and amazing elements. The rest of the coasters are decent at best. Pitt's Special was a confusing choice for a park that already had a Gerslauer Infinity Coaster, but it does have a few redeeming elements. Thunderbird is a clone of American Thunder and offers some airtime. The non-coasters are interesting as you have a shooting dark ride, a very weird log flume, and a few very intense flats like Pegasus. This park doesn't have as strong of an atmosphere as the other parks in the top 10 though, and that's really its biggest weakness. Number 5, Linen Maki. Located in the heart of Helsinki atop a hill, Linen Maki has an incredible atmosphere and it feeds on the energy of the city. And many rides here offer astounding views. This park is super compact, but it's dense, packing in a lot of rides for all ages and appetites. You have a few dark rides, including the bizarrely good Taika Circus with its hundreds of clowns. You have some great flat rides, including the massive Kingy Drop Tower and the Magia Spinning Ride. And then you have eight roller coasters. Most of them are rare or weird models that are okay to decent at best, but there is one star in Taiga. 
this Intamin Lodge coaster feels like Velocicoaster crossed with Helix between its placement on a hill and diverse elements. Number 4. Wiener Prater This Austrian city park feels like a supersized carnival. The park has an electric atmosphere between the city itself and the vibrant lighting packages, and there are nearly a hundred rides, although many are cycled or rotated through. You have some of the craziest flat rides in the world. My favorite here is Black Mamba, which is the Chaos Pendle, but you also have multiple boosters, multiple drop towers, and several other bizarre flats you will not find elsewhere. And each one has run to their fullest potential with long cycles and fast operating speeds. The park also has tons of dark rides. Most are a cut above your average carnival dark ride, but Iceberg is one worth experiencing because it's a weird trackless shooter. Then you currently have 14 different roller coasters, but none are true standouts. The best currently is Mega Blitz, which is a forceful Vacoma family coaster, and the others are mostly small clones. The biggest downside with this park though is the pricing scheme. There is no pay one price wristband, so this can arguably be the most expensive park in the world if you want to ride everything. Number 3. Plopsalanda Pan the flagship park in the Plopsa chain started as a well-themed family park, but it has started offering thrill rides in recent years. This includes Ride to Happiness, which is one of the best coasters in the world. This mock extreme spinning coaster has some of the best inversions in the world, plus good airtime while spinning like a top. Then you also have a good launch coaster in Anubis, plus an okay wood coaster in Heidi. But most of the park's rides are targeted towards families, and the crowds reflect that. The family rides here seem to get longer lines than the thrill rides. Even though I was unfamiliar with the IPs, I loved the colorful theming throughout the park. Number 2. Erlebnis Park Tripstrill The oldest theme park in Germany is one of the most naturally beautiful parks I have ever visited. And the park also has some of the weirdest themes in the world. For example, the Rapids Rise themed to laundry, and the Waltzers themed to baking bread. And all these themes work because the park goes all out. The ride lineup has improved significantly over the past two decades with thrill coasters like Carajo and Hal's Uberkopf. This forms a formidable top two. Then there are a handful of family coasters too. And the Flume is the standout of the non-coasters between its three drops and unique theme where you literally pass naked women bathing in the fountain of youth. I was impressed with how much there was to do a trip stroll between the headlining attractions and all the walkthroughs scattered about the park. This place was just a joy to walk around. And coming in at number one is Energylandia. The premier coaster park in Europe has a whopping 17 coasters with two more on the way for 2022. Most of these coasters are clones, family rides, or kiddie coasters. But there are two truly world class coasters here. Zadra is one of the best paced coasters in the world, as this custom RMC hybrid features massive drops, blistering speed, tons of airtime, and great inversions. Hyperion is an intimate hyper with one of the strongest layouts in the world, mixing in plenty of airtime and laterals. Then you have two good Vacoma launch coasters in Abyssus and Formula to support those top two. Energylandia has tons of other rides too including multiple water rides and a handful of notable flat rides. Operations here are lightning fast, just watch out for line jumping though. And the automated turnstile load systems can be annoying if you want a specific seat on a certain roller coaster. The atmosphere could use some work. The new areas have solid theming, but the original areas still feel a bit tacky. However, the rides are so strong that Energylander can still claim the top spot. So those are the top 20 new to me amusement parks and theme parks that I visited in 2021. What are your thoughts on any of these parks or what's your favorite new park you visited in 2021? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.